Growing fresh, big and delicious tomatoes in your garden is not only easy but very rewarding. In today's episode, we look at 10 tomato growing tips that will help you grow your best tomatoes ever. So sit back and enjoy this journey to tomato well. So in this popular video that I had posted almost 4 years ago, this is one of my most viewed videos. I did receive a lot of comments especially for the fact that there was no talk during the video. So I'm trying to address most of those issues in this new video. Today's episode is divided into these 10 sections and I'm sure that once you go through these 10 sections, you will have a great idea about how to grow great tomatoes in your garden. So first, let's look at the container sizes for tomatoes. If you're growing tomatoes in raised beds or the ground, you don't need to worry about container size. However, if you're growing your tomatoes in pots or containers, let's look at what's the ideal size. The minimum size of a container should be 16 inches. What you see here is a 16 inch wide container, and I recommend this as a bare minimum for growing tomatoes. This sized container has enough room for the tomato plant to grow very well for the entire season, and it holds about seven gallons of soil, seven to eight gallons. Now the ideal container size for growing tomatoes is a whiskey barrel container the one that you see here on your screen right now and the whiskey barrel container is good for one tomato plant only i know a lot of people who plant two or three plants in one container that will not let your tomato plant grow very well because the roots won't have a lot of space to grow so the ideal container size for tomato is this whiskey barrel container and i'll provide links to some of the containers in the video description below so you can buy them but this is the ideal container size the shape doesn't really matter this is a square shaped container which contains about 8 gallons of soil and this is good enough to grow one tomato plant now if you do not have any space or just want the least container size possible you can grow tomatoes in a 5 gallon container what you see here and i recommend that you only grow determinate tomato varieties in this kind of a container and we'll look at determinate tomato varieties and determinate tomato varieties in the future sections of this video now let's talk about the planting technique a very important step in growing great tomatoes make sure that when you're planting your tomatoes you plant them firstly in a decently sized container or in the ground or the raised bed as we discussed in the previous section and when you take your plant out of the container make sure that you plant the tomato plant deep as deep as you can now why is that the tomato plant actually will grow roots all along the sides of its stem if you plant it deep so this is like giving a boost to the root system for your tomatoes and this applies not only to containers but also to plants that you grow in raised beds or in the ground If you plant your tomato plants deep enough they will build a very strong root system they will also stay very still and firm and upright during storms and heavy winds so that's another advantage of planting your plants deep now let's look at the soil that you need to grow tomatoes so if you're growing in the ground you don't really have much choice but to amend your soil but if when you're growing in containers let's look at the different types of soils that are available to your tomato plants The first mix that we're going to see is a common mix that I use for most of my tomato plants in containers and that is a mix of compost, perlite and peat moss. And once you have these three in equal proportions, you can add amendments like azomite as you can see here we are adding some azomite here. You can even add some organic tomato fertilizer before you plant your tomatoes. It's a good way to prepare your potting mix for your tomatoes. Now let me tell you why I like this mix not only for tomatoes but other container plants. Firstly, it's a very lightweight mix. It has a lot of porosity because of the added perlite. You can even use vermiculite if you want. And the compost helps in moisture retention. The compost and the peat moss together form a good water retentive mix. So your potting mix is light. and it's also water retentive it's a great combination to grow your plants and now let's take a look at a fast draining potting mix that will give you even more vigorous growth 
at an expense though, which I will shortly explain you. For this potting mix, you need five parts of ground cover bark or wood chips, which you can find at most uh, home improvement stores. You need one part of peat moss and one part of perlite. Now, as long as you're mixing your ingredients in this proportion, you will have a very fast draining mix. You also need to add some garden lime to this mix because peat moss is slightly acidic and the garden lime actually helps reduce the acidity of the peat moss. But you still need to test your soil pH once you've created the mix. Now mix all the ingredients together and what you get is a very lightweight, very high draining potting mix. And this will help your plants grow very fast. It has a lot of space for the roots to grow. I usually moisten this mix before I put it in my containers because it's so dry. And here you can see it is such a nice looking potting mix. And let's look at the pros and cons. So the benefits of using this potting mix is that it lets your plants grow to their full genetic potential. But the downside is that it requires a lot of watering because it's a very fast draining mix. You might need to water your plants once or even twice on hot days. And then you also need to add a lot of fertilizer to your tomato plants, a liquid fertilizer if you're using this mix because the, the nutrients get drained very quickly from this potting mix. But if you have the time and the energy and the effort to use this mix, go for it, you won't be disappointed. Now, soil for raised beds is slightly different than the one you use for containers. Soils for raised beds should have a lot of organic matter, a lot of compost, and a lot of soil mixed into it as well. What I'm doing here is adding some leaves, dried leaves, and then adding some layer of soil, and then also adding some more compost on the top. This is my homemade compost. And then I cover it with another layer of soil. Now by using this kind of a mix for your raised beds, a layered mix, it'll give you the best results to grow tomatoes. Not only tomatoes, but other vegetables as well. But tomatoes benefit immensely from such a raised bed mix with a lot of organic matter. Once all this is mixed in, just make sure you lay it out very well on your raised bed. Just top it off with some soil and you're ready to plant your tomatoes. Compost has a lot of nutrients, a lot of beneficial nutrients as well as a lot of microorganisms, earthworms and other soil bacteria that are very helpful for your tomato plants. So I highly recommend that you keep adding compost to your raised bed as much as you can. Another important component of your soil is your soil pH. The ideal pH for tomatoes is between 6 to 7 and you can easily buy a soil testing kit. See the video description for a product link to test your soil to get the best tomatoes. A good watering schedule is the next most important thing for tomato plants. Now I recommend that you put your tomato plants on a drip irrigation schedule, especially if you're growing in containers. Containers can dry up very fast depending on what kind of mix you use. And by putting your tomatoes on a drip irrigation schedule, you take the guesswork out of watering your plants. The thumb rule is to water for just enough time that the container starts to drain from the bottom. So it's about three minutes for me for most of my containers. I use a wider emitter. As you can see here, these whiskey barrels have a lot more space. So I use these emitters, which throw out more water. And when you're irrigating raised beds, make sure you use micro sprinklers and then make sure that they run for at least about seven minutes for deep watering your tomato plants. A lot of people are very afraid of overwatering your tomato plants, but don't worry. In hot places like California and Florida, for example, you do need to water your tomato plants very well. Otherwise, they will not grow that well and will not produce good tomatoes. Fertilizers are the next important thing to ensure the good growth of your tomato plants. There are two types of fertilizers, organic fertilizers and synthetic fertilizers. Each one of them has pros and cons and we'll soon see that. Now, organic fertilizers like this one that you see here are made from the byproducts of the animal industry and mostly consists of feathers, bones, blood, 
Some fertilizers even contain the remnants of fish, which is a fish fertilizer. So mostly animal-based products, although there are some products that contain like seaweed, which is a plant-based product. Now let's look at the pros and cons of using an organic tomato fertilizer. The best thing is that it's good for the environment, it's made from natural ingredients, and they're slow releasing naturally, so you don't have the problem of over applying your fertilizer to your plants. The downside is that they're not immediately available to your plants, and it might take up to four to six months for organic fertilizers to be available. So to make organic fertilizers effective, you need to apply them at regular intervals to your containers, to your raised beds, so that they are available in time when the plants need them. The next type of fertilizers are the synthetic or the salt-based fertilizers which are manufactured. And most of my friends who use these kind of fertilizers are either vegans, vegetarians, or do not support the animal slaughter industry. And let's look at the pros and cons of this fertilizer. The benefit of this fertilizer, salt-based fertilizers or synthetic fertilizers is that they are readily available to the plants as soon as you apply it. And some of them can even be a slow-release fertilizer which will last for up to three months. The downside is that when a lot of salt leaches into the water table, it's not so good for the environment. So if you are concerned about the environment, and again, this is up for debate because there's no real proof that synthetic fertilizers are really bad for the planet. But if you do believe in that, then I would recommend that you use organic fertilizers for the best use and to grow the best tomatoes. And here is another tip. When your plants are small and just beginning to grow, use a high nitrogen fertilizer. They're also called all-purpose fertilizers. When your plants are established and they start flowering, switch to a low nitrogen fertilizer that will help you grow a lot of tomatoes rather than growing greens, your plants will produce a lot of tomatoes. Let's now look at some of the problems that you face when growing tomatoes. Insects. The tomato hornworm is one of the most destructive tomato pests. So if you see this large caterpillar, just hand pick and remove it. Otherwise, it will just decimate your crop. Grubs are white insects that are beneath the soil surface and chew on your tomato roots. They also attract moles and gophers and when they become adults, they become the fig eater beetle which will devour your tomatoes. Now let's look at some fungal diseases on tomatoes. Rust, which are brown powdery residues on the leaves and which are very evident here, is one of the most common fungal diseases that you'll see on tomatoes. To prevent rust, just remove the affected leaves, the diseased leaves, and then spray with neem oil to prevent the rust from spreading. The next most common fungal disease is the leaf blight, which will cause your tomato leaves to get yellow and diseased. Now, the leaf blight doesn't really have a big effect on your yield of tomatoes. However, it's something that will make your plant look unsightly. So here you can see some more leaf blight and it, it looks uh, pretty similar to some of the other viral diseases that tomato has. But in all cases, these are mostly fungal diseases which will cause your leaves to get yellow. Tomatoes also are prone to some viral diseases like the leaf curl that you see here. And although the leaf curl again doesn't really affect the vigor of the tomato plant, it does make the plant look a little unsightly. As you can see here, the leaves have curled and these viral diseases are usually transmitted by pests. So the only solution to the viral diseases is to replace the plant and plant a new one. For the fungal diseases, you can spray with neem oil. It's a very effective way to get rid of most fungal diseases for your tomato plants and it's organic as well. So you can add one capful of neem oil to the water that's there in the small sprayer or if you're using a gallon sprayer, for every gallon of water, add two tablespoons of neem oil and then shake your container well, shake your sprayer very well and then spray on your tomato plants. This stops most of the fungal diseases on your tomato plants. Now make sure that you do this late in the day 
Although neem doesn't have any effect on bees, you still want to be careful. So do this late in the day when the bees are not active in your garden. What you see here is blossom and rot, a problem that affects both peppers and tomatoes. What you're seeing here is blossom and rot on some peppers. And you'll also see the blossom and rot on some tomatoes like the Roma tomatoes, San Marzano. And the solution to blossom and rot is to first of all use a good watering schedule. Make sure that you use a fertilizer that's rich in calcium. And that should help you prevent blossom and rot. Birds love your tomatoes just as much as you do. So to prevent birds from eating your tomatoes, just cover it with this net. And this is also helpful to prevent your tomatoes from being eaten by rodents. You can also leave a little bit of water, a bird bath near your tomato plant. And since the birds usually attack your tomato plants for the water or the seeds, they will leave your tomatoes alone when they see the water. Now, rodents also can decimate your tomato plants and if you see damage like this, you probably have more than one rodent in your garden. The solution is something I'm not going to discuss in this video. There are a lot of ways you can get rid of rodents in your garden. Now let's look at some tomato varieties. Tomatoes are broadly classified as determinate and indeterminate depending on how they grow. Determinate tomatoes grow to a certain height and then produce tomatoes all at once. Indeterminate tomatoes rather keep growing and keep producing tomatoes for a long time. Now there are some other varieties of tomatoes as well which you see on your screen and we're not going to go into the details of each variety because there are just too many types of tomatoes that exist. Now let's look at some common tomato varieties that you can grow. For the first time gardener, the early girl or the better boy variety is not only very easy to grow, it also produces a lot of tomatoes. So if you're starting out, this is a great variety that I would recommend. And the next variety that I highly recommend is the honey gold tomato, which is a yellow tomato that's really sweet and very prolific. It's very similar to the sun gold tomato variety and produces a lot of delicious yellow colored tomatoes. The Juliet hybrid tomato was bred specifically for producing great fruits and having great disease resistance. This is another very prolific tomato variety that you can grow in your home garden and I'm sure you won't be disappointed when you grow this variety. This is a grape type tomato and produces these grape sized red tomatoes that are absolutely delicious. And the best part about growing the Juliet tomato is that it grows very well in a container. You can grow one Juliet tomato plant in a whiskey barrel container and it will give you the best yield that you have ever seen from a tomato plant. This is a very prolific variety, produces a lot of fruits and can withstand both high temperatures and cold weather. The San Marzano is a very delicious paste kind of tomato that makes great ketchups and tomato sauces and paste. This is another very prolific variety. It's a heirloom variety which will give you a really good yield. A lot of chefs just value the taste of this tomato and it really is absolutely delicious. So try growing the San Marzano at home and you will be pleasantly surprised. Now let's look at some other hybrid varieties. This is the Red Pride Hybrid Tomato. And remember that the hybrid tomatoes are just natural selection of tomato plants by crossbreeding across plants that are good in some way or the other. The Mountain Pride Hybrid is another example of a great tomato variety, grows excellent in containers, produces these large tomatoes as you see here. And for those of you who are looking to grow tomatoes with a large size, the Mountain Pride Hybrid is an excellent tomato variety to grow. As you see here, these are very large tomatoes and yielding from just one plant. The Cherokee Purple is a heirloom tomato variety. Heirlooms are tomatoes that have been bred over several years and they have always been grown from the seeds of the previous generation. And that's what gives these tomatoes an excellent taste 
They don't have great disease resistance, but they taste really good. The Cherokee purple is a purple colored tomato that is very delicious as well. A lot of people like the acidic taste of this tomato variety. And that's what heirlooms are famous for. They taste excellent. They don't have great disease resistance, but they are very delicious. The black cream is another example of a heirloom tomato variety. Not very easy to grow, very challenging, but produces some fruits that are very delicious. Now let's look at the propagation methods for tomato. Now you all know that tomatoes can be grown from seed. That is the most ideal way to grow tomatoes. You just start your seeds indoors six weeks before the growing season and then transplant them into containers after which you can transplant them to larger containers to the raised bed or the ground. The other propagation method is to just plant some stalks of tomatoes. Now when you're pruning your tomato plants which you will do anyways you get these tomato shoots which are cut from the plant. All you do is just take a container and then plant your tomato stalk into this container and what you get is another tomato plant which is very much identical to the parent plant. So this is a great way to propagate tomatoes and it is really a very easy way to propagate tomatoes. Tomatoes do need to be staked and pruned and let's look at the pruning technique first. Now I usually prune tomatoes that I grow in my containers but I generally do not prune tomatoes that are growing in the ground. However, a little bit of pruning is still okay. Just look around your plants and find these suckers that you see and try to cut them so that they don't overgrow and don't cause a plant that you cannot manage. However, there's no hard and fast rule. Even if you do not prune your tomato plants, you're still going to get a good harvest. But pruning lets you maintain a better shape for your plant. And in case of determinate tomatoes or in case of growing tomatoes in containers, it helps you maintain the size of your tomato plants. And remember to prune the dead leaves and branches from the bottom part of your tomato plant. This improves airflow to your plant and keeps it free from a lot of diseases and pests. So with this simple technique, you can keep your tomato plants disease free. Staking or supporting your tomato plants will let you grow vertically, which is a great benefit. The most common type of stake that we use is the four pronged stake. And this stake is very cheaply available in most garden stores. The key to using this stake is to make sure that it goes down all the way into the ground. What you do not want to do is leave the stake just midway or not fully into the ground. That way it doesn't work really well. So what you do is just take the support and push the prongs deep into the soil and that really gives you a good support for your tomato plants. The Ult Tomato Cage is the other tomato cage that's very commonly available and it works great on 16 inch containers and is almost perfectly sized for a container of this size. For whiskey barrel containers, I prefer to use the Grow Tall Tomato Cage, which is pretty good sized and just big enough for a whiskey barrel. And comparing all the staking techniques together, the four pong steak is pretty cheap. But uh, the Grow Tall Tomato Cage that you see here is actually very useful and can support very heavy tomato plants. Now let's get into some tips and tricks for growing tomatoes. Epsom salt, an organic amendment for your soil and is very beneficial for tomatoes. It contains magnesium and sulfur and most soils are deficient of these minerals and plants like tomatoes and peppers take up a lot of magnesium and sulfur. So do feed your plants with Epsom salt once every three weeks. And to prepare the solution, we use two tablespoons in a two gallon container. So it means that you add one tablespoon per gallon of water and then just add water, let the Epsom salt dissolve in the water and then completely drench your plant with this Epsom salt solution. And if you do this every three weeks or so, you make sure that your soil stays 
very enriched with magnesium and sulfur and that will give you the best tomatoes. Once your tomato plant starts blooming, it's important to hand pollinate your tomatoes. Watch for open flowers and then just use a vibrating toothbrush to pollinate each flower of your tomato plant. This dramatically increases yields. Tomatoes are mostly wind pollinated, but by using this technique, you ensure more fruit production for your tomato plants. And that brings us to the end of this episode. And I'm sure that by watching all of this information about growing tomatoes, you might have a lot of questions. So do post them in the comment box below. If you like our videos, please do give us a thumbs up and we'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.